So today I'm going to be going through Lapez's equation. Well, this is one of the assignments that I had to do at school. Um, so consider Lapez's equation uh, of that form with these boundary conditions, right? And that is our initial condition. Then we are asked to calculate the series solution u of xy, right? Then we're given these few instructions and that we can make assumption of that eigenfunctions are orthogonal and we can use uh, the four standard eigenvalue problems without solving them right so to the solution well i've already drafted the solution so i'll just be going through the steps on how i got each step right so there at the top is still the question, right? So the first things first, you're going to do separation of variables just like any other PD. So you're going to let your u of x, y be that function, there, x and y, right? So now you're going to take the partial derivative, second partial derivative of u with respect to x, you get this with respect to y, get this right now you substitute them back into the original equation over there which is this is what you get and then this is just a case of rearranging right and then you say this is equals to lambda which is just a constant right so and then you take this the x part you say it's equals to lambda it's going to give you this equation and then you take uh the y part you say it's equals to these uh and zero and then these are our um, under conditions for these two new equations that we have and then down here i'm just showing how did we get this and this right so if like we have u of x zero equals to zero that means u of x zero and u of y one uh, equals to zero as well that implies that x o is zero so same applies for these ones. So that is how we got those. And then since y of y fits the boundary conditions of eigen problem 3, then we choose y of y to be the eigen function, right? So, and then remember we are told that we can assume um, the solution of the eigen problem 3 without solving it. And then for eigen problem 3, we we already know uh, that the eigen problem 3 has two eigen values and eigen function right which is uh eigen value 0 uh, which is eigen function 1 and uh the the one of alpha k squared which is also like that so now we're going to have case 1 where we taking uh eigen value equals to 0 so we solve it and then we get this as our um, function right so now we go to the second case for when eigen uh, value is alpha squared, which is equal to that, right? So we plug in our alpha squared and then we get our r as that, right? So that means our x is of this form, right? And then we use our um, our 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 boundary conditions right so we get that d1 equals to minus d uh, so now where there is d2 we put minus d1 which is where something like that and then here uh you're gonna use hyperbolic functions so you should know the definition of sine hyperbolic of x so that's just what we use there so our d star now becomes 2 um d1 right you could have uh, rot 2d1 here is still correct but then to just put one constant I'm just gonna replace 2d1 with d star so now with that solved so that means we now know that our u of x y is of this form right uh so it's c o x o y o and then plus that part right so now our next job will be to solve for x o and x k because those are the only things that we don't know. So now is to find our four coefficients, right? So the first job is to find CO. CO, we use the formula that we know. 
uh, of CO, which is in the test book. So remember uh, how to find your inter, inter, integral limits. You just look at this here, uh, where y moves from. Uh, x uh, moves from 0 to 2, right? Look at y. y moves from 0 to 3, right? So we're integrating from 0 to 3. If we're dealing with x, it was going to be from 0 to 2. So since y is our eigen function, so we're moving from 0 to 3, right? So uh, I believe everybody should be comfortable with integration. So which we find that as our CO. Now we're finding our CK, right? We use the initial condition, right? Which is U of 2Y. So you plug it in, you get that, right? Uh, so this is just, after here, you multiply by the eigen function, which is a Y, N, Y, both sides. And then you integrate both sides, right? Then here, uh, shift uh, the the summation and the integral. You take out the summation, and then here we consider the case when n equals to k, right? So that is why we now have y n squared, where y k is now replaced by y n, because we consider the case when n equals to k. So now everything uh, where n is not equal to k, it becomes 0, so hence we just have these constant here. And then this part equals to this, right? Uh, this, uh, you can prove it, and it's also in the test book, right? So L over 2, our, our L is 2, remember x moves from 0 to 2, so our L is 2, so this just becomes 1, so that's why it just vanished. So from here we find our Cn as this, right? So now it's going to be a case of integrating this, this part, just find the actual value of Cn, right? So here I just took the integral separately and then I'm solving it. So this is just a matter of pen scribbling, right? Which everybody should be comfortable doing. So you just use integration by parts. So you do, you do, you do, you must find that. And then you substitute it back. So your Ck is this. Uh, so where there was alpha k, we put the actual value of alpha k, which is k pi over L, right? So you're going to get something like this, where our L is 2. So now you have every piece, so you just put everything together now. You have your CO, you have your XO, your YO, and you have your CK there at the top. So your final answer will be this. So this is just to provide the general idea and approach to how you can solve such similar problems uh, when, when, when you're dealing with the Laplace's equation. So thank you for tuning in into my video.